next section, we are going to focus on the tooling in on the parallel world tools, trainer and analyzer. We will explain how they support this approach based on the catalog of the pets and recommendations and how they can be used to develop a free C++ Fortran parallel code running for CPU and GPUs. And we will introduce key concepts of how the patterns are used uh, behind the scenes to support all the features available in parallel world tools. And the most, most of the part of the time will be devoted to um, demonstrating not all, but what we think are probably the more interesting capabilities to get started with parallel world tools, going from simple codes to more complicated kernels uh, before um, trying to manage the complexity of real codes, like CPIC, use case will illustrate. So, um, we have more or less 60 minutes for this, but we will try to invest most of the time in showing the tooling. And in this case, Javier Novo, our product manager, will, will share the screen during that part and we will uh, do the demonstration running on, on the coding machine. That's what we have prepared for this, this part of the course. So, parallel world tools. We have two tools, trainer and analyzer. If you look at the wheel on the right hand side, uh, you can see that we are representing this iterative process that you need to follow to go from sequential code to back free parallel code running fast on the CPU and the GPU. And you need to go several times through two key stages, testing and debugging and coding parallel versions. So testing and debugging is where you try to find and fix race conditions and data movement issues. And it's typically, um, uh, it's typically assumed that more or less estimated that 30% of the time of a developer is invested in testing and debugging. In the coding part, uh, you can see that coding, you can code many parts of your code, but we want to remark coding, the parts of the code that you decide that you want to parallelize. So for the coding, um, this is our estimation based on experience. We believe that an additional 30, 40, 50% of time can be invested in this. Why do we say this? Because when you code a parallel version of the code, it would be great if the first parallel version that you code is the correct one and the fastest one. But this is not the case. So you typically, in the coding stage for parallelization, you need to code different versions of the code, two changes to the code, go back and forth until you find the final version of the code that runs in parallel, correctly and faster. So this searching process, trying to implement and debug during the coding stage, the different versions that you generate, is extremely time consuming for kernels and for large applications. So this is why we think it's reasonable to say that coding can take in the parallelization part an additional 30, 50% depending on the code and on the expertise of the development team, okay? So taking this into, into account, how do parallel world tools help in the testing and debugging and coding for parallelism stages? We summarized the features in five main capabilities. Number one, very important, enforce parallel programming best practice recommendations. Remember stage number one, to prepare the code for parallelism, even before deciding where and what OpenMP program you're going to add. That's it, point number one. Point number two, imagine that you have decided to code it a parallel version. You need to detect and fix defects in parallel code, particularly both race conditions and data movement issues. 
and also verify that the code that you have implemented in parallel runs safely, runs correctly. Okay, so you need to detect and verify. Also, there will be parts of the code that are not still running in parallel. So in that case, you will need to discover parts of the code that can be parallelized. So what we call parallelization opportunities or discover opportunities for parallelism. And finally, quickly design and implement parallel code according to best practices. So capabilities four and five are also capabilities available in parallel web tools. So you can see that we are covering the main efforts that we identified at the beginning of the course that are the efforts that the GPU programmer needs to address. So what are the differences between trainer and analyzer? Both trainer and analyzer have all these five features available in different degrees, okay? But all of them are available. What is the difference? The trainer is essentially a graphical user interface for you to learn to code and learn how to code parallel versions using OpenMP and OpenECC. So it is designed to, through several clicks, you can create parallel versions and make the experimentation. So you can compile and run different parallel versions and compare them for performance and correctness. So it is good to focus on a hotspot, a given loop or a given function that consumes most of your running time of your application. Analyzer is different. The purpose of analyzer is not to focus on the hotspot. It can be used for that. But imagine the scenario where you have to start paralyzing an application that you have not developed, in written in C++ and Fortran code that you have never seen before. How do you start? So analyzer is designed to help you during that process. So to get started to analyze big code bases, so it is not a graphical user interface. It is a set of command line tools that you can invoke from a Linux terminal, remotely or locally in your laptop, and scan the complete project, files, functions, loops. You can filter the information that the analyzer will provide to you. And it is also designed so that you can integrate it easily into the continuous integration, continuous development environments or frameworks that you might be using in your development team. Okay. Um, so, looking at these capabilities from a different perspective. Perspective number one and perspective number two. As a developer, what's your main goal? Why are you here? In the end, because you have an application that needs to run faster. And probably that's all the important thing at the end of the day. Run faster to run faster simulations, make more science, solve a problem with more precision, whatever the reason behind it is, but you need to run faster. So accelerate the software runtime through code parallelization. How do you measure that? The metric is clear. You have different metrics, but you need to measure the speed up. How much many times faster is your code using parallelism? And for this, essentially you can use the capabilities of discovering opportunities and designing and implementing parallel code. And the metric, uh, analyzer will provide you with the counters of opportunities found in the code. But this is a complex process. So you can look at it as a black box with the input and the output running faster. But internally, if you look inside the black box, you will see many iterations, many different versions, many small steps that with using trial and error that will take you from the sequential code to the final version that you decide that runs faster and currently, okay? So for this process that is reduced the development effort through detection and generation of bug-free parallel code. So in this case is where the capabilities of detecting and fixing defects, verifying data race free parallel code and enforcing parallel problem best practices is where these capabilities are useful uh, for your a GPU programming or CPU programming efforts. So what metrics can we use here? In general, to measure the development effort, somehow it is related to the number of bugs and the complexity of the bugs that we can find, okay? So in general, we could argue that we can, our objective might be minimizing the number of bugs, okay? So related to this, we can 
you can minimize the number of defects, both data races and data movement. You can uh, maximize the number of bug-free parallel code that you can find. And you can minimize the number of recommendations that you have not yet applied to your code. And that can compromise the quality of your code at a given stage of this development effort. Okay, So these are the five capabilities of how you can use them for these two purposes. The final goal of accelerating the application and the process, how you reach that point, and the metrics that you can use, and how Parallel can help you with the different metrics of opportunities, defects, back free loops, and recommendations. So, in order, before going to the tools and seeing how the, the output looks like and starting the demonstration, we need to understand three key concepts. So remember, parallel tools are based on the concept of pattern. We need to detect patterns because they are the key enabler of all the capabilities that you can see. Detecting defects, verifying data risk free loops, opportunities and generating parallel code as you will see in the demonstration. So the goal is to understand the semantics of the code from the point of view of parallelism. So it's a building block. So you need to see analyzer in three different levels that are incremental. So the first requirement is that your code is analyzable by parallel web tools. What this means is that the source code and the programming language features that you are using are supported by parallel web tools. Okay? As the parallel web tools are in analysis, there are features of the programming language that we do not support yet, while others are very well supported. So in this part, you will see in the reports that some functions and loops will be labeled as analyzable or, or not analyzable. So if you want to unlock the power of patterns and the opportunities and the parallelization capabilities, first you need to guarantee and check that the code is analyzable by parallel world analyzer. Okay? So complete the syntactical analysis of the source code focusing on the programming language features that you are using and that are supported by Parallel. Okay? Once you have that, then the uh, Parallel World needs to understand the code in terms of patterns. So essentially what the tool is doing behind the scenes is taking your code and splitting the code in a set of patterns. So all the patterns need to be understood properly by the tool. If any pattern for some reason is not understood and others are, this will not, this will prevent, this will not allow you to access to the opportunities and to the parallelization capabilities. Okay, so first you need to check that the code is analyzable. Second, you need to check that all the patterns of all the variables in the code are properly identified. Semantic analysis of the source code is completed successfully by Parallel. You will see this in the outputs of the tools. And finally, if we have that, we have a source code that can be analyzed and that can be interpreted by Paragon in terms of patterns. So it can reason in terms based using these patterns. And then we have the higher level of these three incremental levels, the opportunity or parallelization opportunity, which requires previously that the code is analyzable and that all the patterns are correctly understood by Paragon. At that point, you can unlock all the capabilities related to verifying data race free code, identifying opportunities, generating parallel code, and all of the features that you have seen, and you will see in the demonstration. Okay? So this is kind of a way for you to proceed and check with the tools. First, your code or the section of the code that you are interested in needs to be analyzable, then needs to be interpreted from the point of view of pattern-based semantics, and finally, opportunity, okay? Pattern-based specializing in parallelism. Okay, so just as a reminder, we are seeing many, many things. Uh, these are the patterns that we have, complete patterns, memory patterns, flow patterns. And we will essentially focus during this course on two patterns, compute patterns, parallel sparse reduction and parallel sparse for all, because we can, that way we can build upon the contents of the training series of last year. 
And this matches very well in the properties and the semantics that we have found in the CPIC use case study for particle in cells method. And finally, as key concepts, remember the pattern will enable you to access different parallelization strategies. A parallelization strategy is a different way of coding the parallelism using OpenMP and OpenACC. So for each pattern on each platform, multi-threading on CPU or offloading on GPU, you have available different strategies for different patterns, okay? And this is, has been designed and implemented based on the expertise of experts in parallel programming. Okay, so you will see all of this accessible in the tools. So, okay, let's um, move on to the demonstrations. So, very fast. Analyzer is a set of tools, four tools, command line tools. PW report, PW check, PW loops, PW directives. That support the different stages. Report is your friend. Is It will provide you, let's see, an output, it will provide you with high level metrics. How many files have been analyzed, in what time, and how many time codes or files have failed. Code coverage metrics, analyzable files. Remember, the features of the programming language used in these files can be interpreted by parallel work. So you have different coverage in terms of files, functions, and loops. And also in terms of lines of code, slope count. So it will provide you with this metric. So whenever you change your code to enable the analysis by parallel, you will see that this code coverage metrics will increase. Or if you add features that are not supported, this code coverage may be decreased. So this PW report is definitely the entry point, the status, and your friend to check from time to time the status of the whole project that you are working with. The second a part of the output is summary, where you can see what the metrics we introduced before. Effects, recommendations, opportunities, data races, and data race-free loops that have been found. So you can see, this is a NAS parallel benchmark OpenMP implementation in C, very well validated, very well tested. So we have found zero defects, but according to the best practices, recommendations that we have defined, the code might still be improved. Look at the 2000 recommendations uh, um, raised by the tool. Opportunities, the code, OpenMP code runs fast, but there are still uh, opportunities to improve the parallelization of the code through almost 60 new loops that could be parallelized. Okay, and we have been able to verify that 17 loops are data race free. So again, code coverage and this summary in terms of metrics are your friends. And suggestions, very useful. We, in order to implement this, we inspired in the Git uh, control version system. A wonderful feature of Git is that whenever you type a command in a wrong manner, it suggests other ways or commands that you might be thinking of or that you might want to, to invoke. So following this idea in suggestions, what we will suggest you is additional invocations of any of the tools, report, loops, checks, or even directives that can be invoked for the same source code with all the flags. So that you just have to copy and paste and run it on the terminal to explore deeper the, that part of the code that you are interested in. Okay. So remember PW report, entry point and status for code bases to get familiar with all of these code coverage and all of these metrics. The second tool is PW check. This is a specialized in checking the compliance of your source code with the catalog of defects and recommendations. So again, you can invoke it and you will see things like this. PW report, PW recommendation four, PW recommendation 11, and not only the title, but details of the source code line where the defect of the recommendation is found and the suggestion, the action. Remember, these defense recommendations are actionable from your perspective. So the suggestion is how to fix it and solve it. And in the end, you will see a summary. In this case, more than 2,000 checks 
have been successfully executed in 50 seconds. And here you have the breakdown in the, using the set of defects and recommendations that you can see in the catalog. 16 recommendations and eight defects. So you can know how many defects or recommendations of each type have been found by the tool. Okay. Next, PW loops. Remember, once the code is prepared, once the code is free of defects, now you want to enable more parallelism. And here is where PW loops is helpful. It provides you with a listing of files, functions, lines of code, and column, where it can find parallelization opportunities. And look at the columns. Analyzable means that the code uses the programming language features supported by parallel. Compute pattern means that all the patterns of the, all the variables of the loops can be analyzed by parallel. And you can see NA not available. So there are some codes that are still not correctly successfully classified as patterns by parallel. So we are working on improving the precision of the pattern recognition engine. But, and still you have different types of patterns. For all, is the fully parallel loop sparse? Is the sparse reduction opportunity that we will uh, work with during the homework and during the uh, hands-on with CPIC example, okay? And the third column is opportunity. So whenever the code can be successfully represented in terms of patterns, it will provide you with information of if the loop is really an opportunity. So you can see that there, are opportunity, there is one opportunity at line 95 that can be paralyzed using multi-threading or, or CMD execution. And the rest, you can see that they are not marked as opportunities. Why? Because in the end, you can see parallelized column, the fifth column. This means that this code has already OpenMP pragmas. So the code is already parallel, okay? These loops with these patterns is already parallel in the code. And the final column auto parallelizable means that an opportunity successfully detected by Parallel. This column means that Parallel has parallelization strategies to generate parallel code for you. Of course, we are growing the set of patterns. So maybe we have patterns for which we still do not have parallelization strategies implemented. In those cases, this auto parallelizable mark will be missing, will be empty. Okay, so PW loops provides you the information for the listing of all the loops, if it is analyzable, if it is analyzable in terms of patterns, if it provides you really with parallelization opportunities, and after that, how you can generate parallel code using the parallel generation code capabilities of parallel work. And always suggestions with new invocations of loops directives to uh, um, discover more information about what is going on behind the scenes for each of the loops. And finally, directives. Directives is a way for you in the command line to generate parallel code. We will see the demonstration. Here you can see an sparse uh, parallel reduction parallelized using OpenMP for GPU using Teams Distribute parallel form. Okay, we will go through the details in the exercises. Finally, Trainer, for those of you that it is the first time that you see it, it is a graphical user interface with a code editor, a version manager, and consoles to compile and run. And in the editor, you will see several icons. The green circle is an opportunity for parallelization. So all the opportunities you saw in the PW loops in the terminal are available as green circles in the trainer tool. Non-analyzable. We want to see when the code is not analyzable, why it cannot be analyzed. So in the trainer tool, we mark this with a red circle. And also the defects and the recommendations are also available as uh, exclamation marks, green and red, or yellow and red in the trainer tool. Okay, so all the concepts that we have seen are available also in the trainer tool UI. Finally, to generate code from the GUI. Just click on the green circle and open a dialog, choose 
This is the you want of green PO, PNCC, CPU, GPU, multi-threading of loading with different additional hints to provide to the tool and click on parallelize. And it will generate a the parallel code for you or will guide you if there is some information missing that you need to type through other invocation. Okay, so I think it's uh, now the time for to start the, the demonstration.